Boradar, good morning and welcome to today's meeting of Powys Teaching Health Board, which is being held virtually, live streamed via the Health Board's website and will also be available after the event. Um, today's meeting has been convened solely to consider the Health Board's annual plan for 2021 to 22, so it's just a single issue. I'll introduce the participants first. Um, I'm Vivian Harpwood, a chair of Powers Teaching Health Board. Also present, we have Mel Davis, vice chair of the board, uh, independent members, Ian Phillips, Mark Taylor, Susan Newport, Trish Buchan, Tony Thomas, Matthew Dorrance, uh, Robert Lewis and Francis Gerard. Welcome to all of you. Also present, the uh, Chief Executive, Carol Schillerbeer, and the following directors, Hayley Thomas, Deputy Chief Executive and Director of Planning and Performance, uh, Jamie Marchant, Director of Primary Community Care and Mental Health, Alison Davis, Director of Nursing and Midwifery, Pete Hopgood, Director of Finance and IT, Stuart Bourne, Director of Public Health, Kate Wright, Medical Director, Julie Rose, Director of Workforce and Organisational Development, and Claire Marsden, Director of Therapies and Health Sciences. In addition, we have uh, our usual support, for which we're grateful, uh, Rani uh, Mallinson, the Board Secretary. Uh, we also have Katie Blackburn here from the Community Hen Health Council and Frances Hunt and colleagues from the corporate governance team who will also be supporting this meeting. Um, apologies from Ronnie Alexander, our new independent member. Uh, he had a, 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 another commitment which had been organised long before he was even appointed, so unfortunately he can't make the meeting today. Um, please be aware that participants may well look away from the screen from time to time to access various documents. So um, just going to the agenda now and it's published on the Health Board's website. Um, apologies for absence. Um, do we have any apologies today? I haven't got any on my list, so um, only um, Ronnie. Um, then declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest about which we did not previously know in respect of today's meeting. No, OK, thank you very much. Um, so that brings us to the first and only item today, which is the uh, Health Board's annual plan for 2021 to 22. Uh, we have this is not the first time we've considered this. Um, it's been through uh, other iterations. Uh, it has been considered by the board in March and the board has received subsequent updates. So we are now all very familiar with it. Um, Carol Schillerbeer uh, will be leading this item, but of course, Hayley Thomas, our Director of Planning, has been deeply involved and she will be um, obviously supporting Carol. So over to you, Carol. Thank you very much, Chair um, uh, Baradar Paub. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm um, really pleased to be bringing forward the annual plan for 2021-22, just by way of reminder. Um, uh, in usual times, we are required to submit a three-year plan, an integrated medium-term plan. That is a requirement uh, under the NHS Wales uh, Finance uh, Act of 2015. Um, uh, but for this uh, period, because of the pandemic, the Welsh Government's planning framework requires us to submit an annual plan. As the Chair has just said, we did submit a draft annual plan at the end of March uh, with a commitment to refine that plan um, as we uh, understood a little bit more about the key objectives uh, for the coming year, given the uncertain um, environment in which we're still operating in. So we've used the last couple of months just to refine the plan um, to uh, receive some feedback from Welsh Government uh, and to really focus on a number of areas for renewal. 
So whilst um, I'll look to introduce this item, Hayley will support, um, we uh, will have contributions from a number of directors as we go through. Um, we were in the fortunate position of being able to uh, rehearse, if you like, some of this uh, last week in our joint executive team meeting with Welsh Government, which is an accountability meeting. Um, and um, uh, we did get some uh, positive feedback. So we're uh, anticipating, um, uh, hopefully anyway, a, a smooth sort of entry of this plan as we go uh, forward. Um, uh, so the other thing just to recognise is that this is the work of a significant number of people across the, the health board um, and at a time when uh, clearly there's been a, a lot to do and the pressure is still significant. So I do want to thank colleagues for being able to lift their heads to think about the totality of this year um, and even to um, have an eye into beyond this year because some of the elements within the plan are not just a one year only uh, uh, pieces of work, but likely to extend over the next two, three, four uh, and even uh, beyond uh, that period. So uh, thanks to colleagues and particularly those in the planning department for uh, being able to bring this uh, to the board uh, today. So I'm going to hand over to Hayley now. And as the chair has just said, some of these slides may be familiar uh, to board members um, and some of them will be an extension on the work that we've uh, been undertaking already. So um, thank you, Hayley, over to you. Diolch, uh, Carol. Uh, adiolch y fawr iawn um, uh, am y cyfle i gyflwyno'r cynllun blynyddol i'r bwrdd uh, i gymeradwyo heddiw. A dwi'n diolch gar iawn hefyd am gyfraniad pawb uh, yn enwedig y tîm cynllunio. Yeah, thank you, Carol. Um, I'll start by presenting the annual plan. And as you said, um, it's a, a really important piece of work and I'm very grateful for everybody's contribution to developing this plan, in particular um, the planning team for the support in making this happen. So if we could move the slides forward, Caroline, please. Just a short reminder to the board that uh, we set at the start a process around planning ahead, which set a six step approach to this. Um, and the board will have received some of this information in previous uh, meetings. But the first step was around assessing our learning and reflections and making sure that we considered the latest evidence available to support <laughs> the development of the content of this year's plan, in particular, understanding the impact of the pandemic and uh, new ways of working that we'd implemented. And also looking at the assessment of the position, the baseline position has significantly changed during the last year. So we're having to look differently going forward around how we deliver our usual business, but also how we deliver the backlog of, of issues that have emerged during the last year. The plan has um, been also uh, considered around critical priorities and outcomes. And again, we have at various times both engaged with key across the organisation and with the board around developing the priorities and outcomes that we're trying to achieve in the next year in light of the latest evidence and the learning and reflections that we've taken. And as part of that, um, we've developed proposals um, which we submitted to Welsh Government around our renewal and recovery work uh, alongside today's annual plan, which we're presenting today. Could you move forward, please, Caroline? Thank you. This is our plan on a page, um, and I just wanted to remind the board the work that we did as part of our long term strategy to develop a set of core principles um, to help us drive our approach to delivery and development of our plans. Uh, and this still remains a cornerstone of how we're developing um, this year's uh, content for our plan. And that was around making sure that we do what matters, do what works, be prudent, focus on the greatest need, offer fair access, and of course, very importantly, working with people and communities. We've got three sections to our plan. The first one is our continued response to the public health emergency. Um, and clearly there's a lot to do still going into the next year uh, around prevention, response and also to uh, deliver the mass vaccination programme. And the second part is around essential health care, 
and making sure again that we are delivering on focusing on well-being, the key public health programmes we have in train around health improvement and promotion, childhood immunisation, flu, screening, etc. And of course, working together with our partners and the important role that the third sector play. And um, in terms of primary and community care, we've got to ensure that all those services are in place and the plan covers detail uh, and my colleagues will take us through that uh, in future slides. Um, and also just across the whole system of care. So it's not just primary and community, it's also around our secondary care services that our population accesses and specialised care as well. The third part to our approach is around renewal and recovery. And we'll cover, there'll be some content in the slides a little bit later uh, around the uh, key priorities that we've set for that. But of course, our workforce is important and particularly over the last year, staff wellbeing has been a core component that we've considered and we'll be covering detail around how the um, our approach within the next year will cover our workforce futures. Also the important role that digital has played in helping us to respond in the last year and the opportunities that affords us going forward and innovative environments uh, and the work that we're doing both in terms of the research, health and care, uh, academy thoughts, but also in terms of our capital investment and plans. And finally, but not least, transforming in partnership with our partners. There's a very strong, active partnership agenda within Powys and with uh, with regionally and nationally that we play our part. So that's a quick overview of our strategic annual plan on a page. Uh, we'd like to pass over now and move on to the next slide, please. Um, to Stuart. Thank you. Thanks. Um, uh, thanks, Haley. Just to uh, really cover off the. Uh, point that Hayley made just a few minutes ago that uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus pandemic obviously has not gone away, um, notwithstanding the uh, really excellent position in, in Powys and Wales really around vaccination. Uh, we are still dealing with um, cases on a, on a daily basis and that's likely to obviously continue as we go through for the rest of 2021-22. Um, in particular, we're um, very slightly pivoting now towards variants and variants of concern. Um, we grow increasingly confident about the uh, benefit of vaccination in terms of transmission and preventing transmission and then also um, hopefully hospital admission and death. But we are equally concerned about the potential for um, the coronavirus pandemic to escape in terms of vaccination. So um, a lot of the focus as we go forward now for the rest of the year is about our capacity capability to contain um, any new variant that uh, may occur in uh, in the UK as a whole and, and certainly in power. So um, we've recently revised and refreshed the prevention and response plan for Powys, which is a, a plan that we prepare in partnership with particularly local authority Powys County Council. Um, we work very closely with the council on the prevention response uh, approach uh, that we take locally. And so we put uh, workforce plans in recently for both testing and tracing that will give us the workforce resilience through to 31st of March in terms of our ability to carry out testing and tracing through the rest of the year. But we've also looked at other aspects such as if we were required to do surge testing due to a new variant in a small area. Um, we've done some work just bolstering up our capacity to carry out that type of intensive, very local testing program, as well as really focusing on lateral flow testing. Um, we've had a lot of focus um, last year around uh, PCR testing. The advantages around lateral flow in terms of asymptomatic testing we um, uh, have responded to this year and we've um, developed uh, quite a few plans now to roll out lateral flow testing in powers both through libraries but through employers as well. And then probably the third area of focus as we move through is, is the ongoing communications around um, uh, face mask wearing, social distancing, um, some of the broader communication and messaging to the public as we move through the rest of the year about um, recommendations regarding isolation and, and behaviours. Um, it is still a very rapidly changing environment and 
the requirements and the need to response remain very live and very immediate. Um, but we have got a, a plan that takes us now through to the end of 21-22 in terms of particularly the robustness of our, of our TTP response for powers for the rest of the year. Thanks, um, uh, Hayley. Caroline, can you move the slide forward, please? Okay. Thank you. Um, this slide just again covers the, the, the content really I covered in the summary annual plan, the key areas around essential uh, health care. And again, we'll be uh, picking some of the detail up of this uh, a little bit later in terms of our renewal priorities. But it's just to, to remind us that we're covering this across the whole system and across the whole pathway through from wellbeing and prevention, primary and community care through to regional DGH and specialised services. Can we move on, if that's OK, Caroline? Thank you, Julie. From a board perspective, we know that the future is the workforce and obviously we have um, focused on our workforce and developing a number of initiatives in terms of supporting not only the current, but the future as well for the workforce in Powys. Some notable programmes that we have developed uh, relate to Kickstart, whereby we've become the gateway employer across our partner organisations to support those on universal credit entering the workplace and hopefully developing careers in health and uh, social care. Our collaboration and work with, uh, with the voluntary sector, notably Parvo in its support of the mass vaccination approach has been a significant step forward in our strategic approach with volunteers and we also have had a number of initiatives uh, with the military but also mid wales fire and rescue service who have been supporting us through mass vaccination our sickness absence um, has been a priority for us to monitor to ensure that we are supporting the well-being of our staff and moving forward that continues to be a key theme for us uh, we have had some feedback in relation to uh, our staff from both the staff survey and new ways of working and our evaluation of that work and uh, there, there is clearly a, a strong positivity for the workforce and the workforce working with us and being engaged with the organisation. We have focused on um, developing wellbeing sites across the organisation in terms of ensuring staff are supported during the pandemic, but also developing and moving that forward. And uh, we have obviously uh, very, very pleased to have access for our staff to Silver Cloud and CBD services. We will continue to, to focus on developing the wellbeing offer and ensure that we can support our staff uh, as we move forward uh, and move into recovery. Uh, as we know, the Workforce Future Strategic Plan has been um, a, a, a really key driver for us in the Health Board and continues to, to be the focus for us moving forward. One of those areas, uh, as we have previously discussed, has been the development of the Health and Care Academy and we are pleased to say that um, we have had uh, support for this through a number of areas um, more recently through the um, <clears throat> charitable funds committee and we anticipate that our first flagship building uh, based at Bronclease will be opening in the early autumn this is a really exciting opportunity for us and it gives us the opportunity to bring education and learning into Powys for the population of Powys and enables us to develop um, the workforce for the future and we have worked with key partners both in terms of uh, uh, across the sector but also some really really exciting uh, developments we have been working with Aberystwyth University uh, to develop their offer uh, and we're awaiting the final outcome of that uh, that work to date so we want to ensure that um, our workforce can respond in a timely way that we can develop people to begin their careers in Paris and to work right the way through um, but also we want to support all our workforce which includes volunteers and carers for the future. Thank you Hayley. Pete are you happy to be? Yeah thank you Hayley so uh, in terms of digital first this is about um, continuing our accelerated digital journey 
Um, the key areas we'll be focusing on are um, agile working, improving that digital access for people, increased use of national products, um, and included in that is a strong focus on outcome measures, ensuring that they're improved, empowering staff to work digitally, giving people access and use of Office 365, the use of Teams, supporting patient flow using Consultant Connect, and also looking at our cross-border um, data sharing and information flows, virtual meetings and digital consult consultations, um, virtual, consulta virtual consultation using Attend Anywhere, we completed 7,000 appointments using this method over 11 month period and also connecting patients and their families, ensuring that we have digital champions and improving access for people using tablets for relatives, etc. Next slide, please, Caroline. So really just to, just to just to flag in this area, the key thing is the work that we're doing with our third sector colleagues, including Parvo. Um, we've invested in this area to really help provide support to our population to give them confidence to work digitally and use the, the various issues I just talked through on the previous page. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Um, in terms of innovative environments, I think in particular our mission here, we are growing every year our capital pipeline and we've got a strong ambition to continue to make inroads to the level of backlog maintenance that we've got across our ageing estate in Powys. We're really pleased that we have secured significant investment in infrastructure, but also fire, anti-ligature and also we're really delighted that we're now on site delivering the Machanlef Health and Care Hub. In terms of the important agenda around green health and decarbonisation, we are also uh, strongly taking that agenda forward as part of our plan this year and we have secured again some additional funding to support that agenda. We're currently going through a scrutiny process around key strategic developments, uh, for example, the North Powers Wellbeing, Wellbeing Programme Business Case and the Programme Business Case to complete Llandrin Dodd and also Brecon Car Park. And we hope to imminently hear about those three uh, investments so that we can build that into our plan this year. The final point I just wanted to raise around innovative environments is that there's been a lot of change over the last 16, 17 months, in particular the um, step change around the use of digital and new ways of working, but also the impact of agile working. Um, so we're having to think very carefully about what that means in terms of the built environment. Uh, and we'll be updating our strategic framework for innovative environments this year to support those changes, but also to support the renewal agenda that we'll cover a little bit later. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Caroline. Just mentioned to you about the programme business case having been submitted to de develop the, the multi-agency campus in Newtown as part of the North Powers Wellbeing programme. But this programme is a flagship programme that sits under the Regional Partnership Board uh, and obviously we secure transformation funding to take this work forward in partnership. We've developed a new integrated model of care and well-being uh, in Powys, and uh, that model of care is about transforming the way we deliver care and support for everyone in Powys, shifting the focus away from ill health and towards improving well-being and better health for future generations to come. Supporting this vision is around the development of a new state-of-the-art rural regional centre and community well-being hub for residents across North Powys and the centre would be part of a much wider multi-agency wellbeing campus in Newtown that brings together a range of services from the town on one site. It'll also connect with the network of existing community hospitals we've got across Powys and with the district general hospitals around our borders um, to ensure that residents receive uh, the right treatment in the right place at the right time. Uh, and central uh, to this is also ensuring a more joined up experience for local residents through more integrated pathways of care across Mid Wales. So I've mentioned before about the learning around the pandemic. So again, we will be uh, and are updating our plans to take that into account. And it's really uh, highlighted the importance of strengthening mental health and wellbeing support for young people 
um, and also supporting access to health and care through digital technology and working across the voluntary community health and care service is a key component of what we're delivering around joined up care. So we're really hoping this new model will bring into uh, the fore a, a flagship development that will enable our joint health and care strategy to become a reality uh, and bringing to life a healthy caring powers in North Powys. OK, um, Caroline, could we have the next slide, please? Um, hand back to Carol. Thanks. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Um, well, uh, it's probably fair to say that um, uh, nowhere uh, across the uh, the UK has as many partners, uh, both uh, in terms of the provision of services for our population um, uh, and in terms of the numbers of partnerships that we work on uh, within Wales with other partners. Uh, uh, Powys is about uh, partnership and so in relation to the transforming in partnership objectives, um, there are a number of really key uh, developments. So um, I'm just going to start with the Public uh, Services Board and um, uh, yesterday, for example, the, the PSB met and had a discussion really about poverty, socioeconomic challenges uh, and the impact of the pandemic. And um, it's fair to say that all of our partnerships and our partnership working uh, has got the backdrop of those broader issues that we're needing to deal with. Um, so we will continue to work with the PSB. Uh, there is a need to undertake uh, both the well-being assessment and the population needs assessments uh, through this year to help inform the future plans. But uh, for this year, we do have um, some key priorities has been outlined there. We've uh, also got the uh, Mid Wales Joint Committee for Health and Care. Um, that is a, uh, a joint committee of both the health service and local authorities of uh, Ceredigion, uh, Gwynedd in particular, and uh, and Powys, and the uh, health boards uh, Howaldar, Powys, and uh, Betsy Cadwallader. And you can see there that there are a number of uh, priority areas, particularly uh, in in um, a concert with the recovery plans that we'll be looking to uh, make progress on. We've got a significant number of cross-border, regional and national interdependencies, which does make us unique as a health board. Um, and this year, I think it's been important that we have put within our uh, long-term agreements, uh, so the agreements we have with the NHS partners, a, uh, a commitment to work together on recovery and service developments. Um, uh, we hope that that uh, sets the tone for our commitment to partnership working and recognising that the pandemic has changed very many things for very many people. So our, our focus really is on working together uh, across the boundaries um, in the interests of the powers population. And then just to the left hand side of this is um, really quite a major partnership for us, which is the Powers Regional Partnership Board. Um, it, it is responsible, of course, um, for taking forward a, a number of the really key partnership priorities that have been um, reframed uh, to some large extent because of the pandemic, but um, largely remain in tune with the health and care strategy that we uh, approved back in 2017. Um, and I hope that you'll see some alignment now when we move on to our renewal areas. But um, this is a very busy uh, landscape for us. And I know that as a board, we will want to pay attention uh, particularly to the developments in the partnerships uh, arenas. So uh, thank you. And we move to the next slide, please, Caroline. Great, and I think if I just hand over to Pete, pass the baton. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, Carol. So um, th this first slide really is taking the board through our approach to delivering financial and service sustainability over the next number of years. This will be familiar to the board. We've been through it previously and it's included in every finance report that I present to the board. So just as a reminder, this is our, our four quadrant approach developing our efficiency framework which is now up and running and live within the health board continuing our focus on value-based healthcare 
we've established the new investment benefits group, which focuses on ensuring we deliver, deliver benefits against all those decisions that we made and other general developments and opportunities to improve our efficiency and uh, financial performance. All of these actions together are focusing on um, us allocating our resource into the best place to deliver the best outcomes for the population of Powys. If you can move on, please, Caroline. In terms of the financial, um, the financial plan, we currently have a balanced plan. Um, the key um, variables are identified in the table before you, which demonstrate the, um, the financial ask above our baseline funding and operational activities. As you can see, there's an assumption of an additional £32.3 million pounds worth of funded in relation to our COVID response and our recovery activity. Um, the assumption is that will be funded in full and we monitor the plan as we have been for the first few months of the year um, to take appropriate actions to live within our means. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Um, so if I can just focus on governance. So uh, for, for the year ahead, we've uh, we've got clear governance arrangements in place for overseeing delivery of our priorities, including a chief executive led renewal portfolio board, uh, and that will will report up to board through the executive committee chair's report. Um, board members will be aware that we're currently reviewing our committee structure to ensure that that remains aligned to the priorities and our strategic risk profile. And a paper will come forward on those proposals to the next meeting. Uh, in addition, we will continue to reflect on our revised ways of working to ensure that they remain fit for purpose. And uh, we are we are linked in with national work ongoing to uh, reflect on lessons, um, governance changes throughout the pandemic uh, to inform future ways of working. And that builds on Audit Wales report, uh, doing it differently, doing it right. Uh, our annual governance programme for the year ahead focuses on those areas we've identified for further improvement. And the Audit Risk and Assurance Committee is cited on that programme and the milestones for delivery and will oversee progress uh, of implementation on that. And then the annual governance programme uh, aligns closely with our organisational de development framework and our board development uh, plan. These three documents enable uh, us to embed good governance and to ensure uh, we are led by a high performing unitary board. If I can hand to Julie, she will come in on the OD framework in spe uh, specifically, thanks. So in terms of our organisational development framework, we are refreshing our framework for the ambition that we've already identified, ensuring that our people, our structure and our processes are aligned to the delivery of the strategy is absolutely vital and ensuring that we have the culture necessarily to take us to where we want to be longer term. So a number of the actions within the OD framework remain extant. However, we need to refresh in light of the lessons that we've learned uh, during the pandemic and as we move forward in terms of recovery. So that will be an overarching document that will set a clear direction in terms of those specific areas. Leadership and the, and the development of compassionate leadership at all levels of the organisation will be a focus as we move forward. Thank you. So if I just pick up from here, um, thanks, uh, thanks Chair. That really is the, the focus on uh, the overview of the, the, the current uh, annual plan and the updated an annual plan. The next section uh, goes into a little bit more detail about um, the recovery and the renewal uh, portfolio. Uh, Rani just mentioned in terms of the governance arrangements that we have established a portfolio board uh, to help us to drive and oversee recovery and renewal um, and the reporting arrangements have been um, outlined in, in Rani's slide. But I think we're just going to move through a couple of these areas. I know that when we um, uh, signed off the draft as a board, uh, the draft annual plan in March as a board, um, we said that we would come back at the end of quarter one to share a little bit more detail on what this uh, now looks like. Um, uh, in the intervening uh, period, we have had um, an allocation from Welsh Government following um, some proposals that we submitted. We've had a financial allocation of in the region of 2.5 million to get started on this work. So uh, we'll touch on that as well as we move through. 
So if we could go to the next slide, uh, please. There's a couple of slides here, and I don't think we'll go through them, but I will just invite um, a Stuart to make a comment. But a couple of slides here, which I hope are um, helpful, and obviously the slide pack will be available uh, after the meeting, that just gives the summary of the information and the evidence base that we have been using to try to understand where we should put our key efforts in uh, reducing uh, the harm and the impact of the pandemic. So if I just bring Stuart in at this place. Thank you, Stuart. OK, thank you, uh, Carol. As Carol has alluded to, um, my um, uh, my predecessor, actually, Dr Catherine Woodward, has done uh, quite a bit of thinking on this, which has actually been very helpful and very informative. So I would just um, pass on my thanks for that uh, work that uh, Catherine Woodward has done and, and is continuing to do. Um, there is a there is a, a, a wealth now of emerging evidence about the uh, particularly the um, uh, wider harms of, of COVID-19 in terms of um, some of the impacts on particularly hard to reach groups, uh, groups that already had an experience disadvantage um, due to uh, the wider determinants of, of, of health. Um, particularly in terms of COVID-19 as it's, it's a bit of an awkward phrase, but COVID-19 is a syndemic. So um, what we do know is that those that were already worst off have had the worst experience uh, as part of the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's essentially what we mean by syndemic. Um, the virus itself has uh, worked in concert really with economic and social disadvantage. And we have seen lower socioeconomic groups. We have seen um, a BAME communities, we have seen those with chronic disease, uh, pre-existing chronic disease all fare worse as a result of the pandemic. So it's had a multiplier effect effectively on pre-existing inequities that we know about. And there is quite a bit of emerging uh, work being done in Wales and quite a bit being done elsewhere really, looking at what some of the impacts of COVID-19 might be in terms of chronic disease, distribution of chronic disease among, among harder to reach groups. And it, 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 it's uh, probably no surprise that what we're beginning to find is that the um, the impacts are going to be uh, felt more severely in in future years for for those particular groups, and so what we're trying to do now is to really make sense of that in both the immediate post pandemic environment, but also longer term, to begin to think about what a wider strategic approach to those indirect harms from COVID-19 are likely to be and how we can work both in partnership through groups like the PSB, but I think also as a as a health board in our own right um, to try and mitigate some of those impacts as we go forward over the next um, probably five years plus, to be honest, this is the to some extent, these are going to be the really big outcomes that we need to do something about in relation to the pandemic. We're very focused on the here and now, but these long term effects of the pandemic are probably going to be in scale, potentially bigger than uh, bigger than we face during the short term approach to the to the pandemic at the moment. So as Carol's alluded to, there's probably about four or five slides that were in here, and I think justifiably so, because it's a really big issue that we need to need to address. Um, but we're beginning to um, try and find a, a sense of a way forward in terms of, I think, a, a, a policy and an action response, both in partnership, but as a as a health board as well. And that will develop over the next um, uh, over the next year as we get um, as we get clearer. Uh, thank you, Carol. Thanks very much, Stuart. Um, I think we're being a little bit challenged by some internet connections, so I shall just ask Caroline just to um, slowly move through the next few slides. If there is anything you want to pick up in here, Stuart, then please, uh, please do. Um, can I just pause on this one? Um, I, I particularly, oh, sorry, just the one previous. My apologies, Caroline. Um, thank you. Um, the reason I want to just pause on this one is because um, we're, we're, we're really talking um, numbers here, and this is helping us to and make real uh, the issues in terms of what our services um, will need to consider uh, in terms of responses. So you can see that um, uh, for long term uh, illness, um, uh, for musculoskeletal problems, for heart and circulatory problems, respiratory problems, uh, diabetes and uh, the metabolic uh, problems, 
and mental health problems, uh, all of these are going up in the in the information that we've got available to us. And so uh, our focused action really uh, is around uh, these areas. So thank you, Caroline. If we just move forward, uh, another two slides. Thank you. And um, just to draw on some of the evidence here from the King's Fund, um, who, who have looked at um, disasters from around the world. Um, and um, uh, their thinking is uh, that uh, the, the, the pattern of um, uh, recovery um, uh, will, will, will be challenging and we will have setbacks um, and we will have to work um, collectively on a, a number of key areas, really mental health and wellbeing, community need and being connected to our communities feels extremely important. Uh, a process that we have, I think, uh, improved on significantly during the pandemic, and that will need to be maintained, not leaving anyone behind, and then collaboration. Thank you, Caroline. And the next slide. Uh, and the next slide. There we are. So um, just to start introducing this uh, this section, um, so as we said at the start of the presentation, a set of renewal priorities um, and a portfolio approach. And this is really, we want to root this in a value-based healthcare approach, uh, working locally, regionally and nationally. And it may well require uh, very new and radical solutions to the challenges that we, uh, we face. Um, but it, it certainly builds on the ambition that we have had in a healthy caring powers. So I think we're going to go to um, each of the lead uh, directors for these six key areas just to give uh, an overview. So the next slide, please. And we're starting with Dr. Kate uh, Wright on frailty and community model. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Carol. So yeah, so for frailty, we've already have a well-established frailty model, which has got some really good areas of practice, but there are also some areas of fragility. And so what we want to do is really build on the model to make it more sustainable and more consistent. Um, that's going to involve, first of all, increasing or improving our clinical leadership and our specialist consultant input. Um, really focusing on value based measures to make sure the interventions that we choose to use are evidence based and have the best outcomes and experiences for patients. Um, there are some measures such as frailty scoring, which already happen, but on a more sporadic basis and um, simple measures like that rolled out can really make a difference in identifying the patients who are at risk of frailty. Um, with the aim to identify the patients who would benefit from an earlier intervention with the aim to um, providing the measures they need to keep them healthy and to keep them at home. That might involve a whole range of different measures which would be provided by the multidisciplinary team. Uh, some already happening, but are not as consistent a way as it can. So yet yeah, really the summary is to increase what we're doing, but do it more consistently to strengthen our team and make it more sustainable with the ultimate aim of keeping many more of our patients at risk of frailty healthy and well living in their homes and being treated in Powys. Lovely. Thanks very much, Kate. Um, we, the next slide uh, helps us to understand a little bit more on the long term conditions and well-being and uh, I'll bring in Claire, Claire Madsen. Thanks, Claire. Thank you, Carol. Um, th this really talks about how we support those people in our population who are living with one or more long term conditions and how we really support them to maximise their health and live as well as they can with their long term condition and also giving them skills to manage their condition themselves and, and know what to do at the right times. This is a big challenge because so many of the population live with more than one long term condition, but it's also a huge opportunity for us. So one of our biggest challenges is culture really here because we have traditionally a very medical model and we really want to turn towards a more biopsychosocial model. So we really embrace every aspect of somebody's life, really understand how the way they work, the way they live, um, their socioeconomic status really impacts upon their health status. So it, it requires us as both health professionals, but also as a population to really think the way we work. Um, so we need to develop new skills in our workforce and really um, work with our population to understand what they need most. 
It also requires us to work with primary uh, care, our GP colleagues, to really understand what's important to them and what, where their biggest gaps and where they need most support. Um, really, this is just about making long term conditions everybody's business, so we all do everything we can to contribute to everybody's health and well-being. Uh, it's probably worth acknowledging one of our biggest challenges in Powys is um, our medical model and um, really working with uh, our GP colleagues will help us with that. So this is, a, as I say, a real um, opportunity for us in the future to really support people to self-manage and also to maximise their health um, and well-being. So thank you, Carol. Thanks very much, Claire. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next uh, priority area is diagnostics, ambulatory and planned care. And Jamie Marchant is leading this area. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Carol. <coughs> Thanks, colleagues. Uh, uh, as it says on the slide, this is a uh, all the areas are vitally important. Uh, the, on the right hand side, it will tell you the key measure here is what we tend to call RTT, the field of treatment times. Um, the focus for us this year is the impact and how we can improve the situation in the year and laying a solid foundation for future developments, which is to provide as much local services as possible to the population of Powys. Traditionally, Powys as a provider has done very well on its waiting times. The implications of the COVID pandemic have been that we have not met that that standard as set by its Welsh Government on our own aspirations. This work is what we will do with Welsh Government support and funding to maximise the benefits of that to, to improve those waiting times back to the levels historically attained by powers so that people are not waiting for a procedure uh, in the way that they're waiting at the moment. That's our key focus, looking also at the potential for future developments around additional diagnostics and additional planned care within the area. Uh, I think what that is a huge challenge for us will be the capacity of staff nationally and locally. We will require to recruit staff and are really looking to make sure that we are securing uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, pursuing every avenue of potential capacity that can be used to make sure that our patients wait as short a time as possible as we recover the position for, for Powers population. Thanks, Carol. Thanks. Thank you, Jamie. Um, uh, moving into priority area four is advice, support and prehabilitation. And uh, back to Hayley. Thank you. Thanks. Well, we, we know the scale of the challenge that we've got um, uh, in terms of the numbers of people that are waiting uh, for elective treatment. And we know it's going to take quite a long time to recover the position across all the providers. Um, so this service is around providing advice, support and prehabilitation and focused on improving a person's well-being, physiological and psychological health whilst they are having to wait longer for treatment. This will be targeted but available irrespective of which provider the uh, people have been referred to and it's about active contact and active offer and timely communication with people so that they have the latest information and, and are made aware of what is on offer um, and patients are also supported to navigate waiting times and also offered support so that they can maximise their health and well-being and this is in partnership working with primary care and other partners including the third sector. Some of the examples uh, that might improve patient uh, outcomes is around things like functional support, medicines optimisation, uh, exercise, lifestyle advice, nutrition, uh, alcohol advice, smoking cessation, etc. And also some of the stress management, pain management and anxiety reduction. And we'll work with the clinicians also around strengthening clinical guide guidelines. Uh, and in particular, we've got some work planned around some of the high volume specialties. Um, those are at the moment initially orthopaedics and ophthalmology, um, but obviously general surgery and urology are also uh, high volume specialties that we'll look at. Um, thank you, Carol. Um, Thanks very, <laughs> thanks, thanks very much, Hayley. That's that's great. Um, yes, we're going next to um, the priority that relates to children and young people and really significant uh, priority this this is too. So uh, across to Alison Davis, Director of Nursing and Midwifery. Thank you. Um, thank you. Really, really pleased to bring to the attention this renewal priority in relation to children and young people. I think it really underlines the health board's commitment to our population focus uh, and we all know children and young people are our future. We also know from um, previous slide presentations here that children and young people may well have been um, disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic 
And we know from an equality and equity point of view, they're a key population group that we need to um, provide as best offer as we can to help increase um, health and wellbeing. We know the evidence base tells us that there are a few key areas that children and young people uh, have been adversely uh, impacted upon. Uh, emotional health and mental wellbeing is one, um, even access to primary care services that we are uh, uh, used to in terms of dental optometry uh, services are others. So um, the priority is far reaching. It covers children and young people aged 0 to 18 and reaches from universal service provision right through to more targeted provision where we have children with uh, um, additional needs. Uh, there are eight core components to, to the work that's been undertaken and we are taking a phased approach. So we know this work is starting this year in year one and we should be able to make some gains, but this will be a long term focus uh, for the health board. Dioch. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Uh, that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, just moving into priority area six and um, our board members will, of course, recall um, quite quite clearly that tackling the big four is one of our uh, well-being objectives in the health and care strategy. Um, and we have uh, brought them uh, across into the renewal priorities here. So we will run through those big four uh, areas. They are more relevant than ever before, given the uh, challenge of the pandemic. So we're starting with cancer and uh, Kate Wright. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Carol. So yeah, we know that during the pandemic, then there has been a reduction in people accessing cancer services. Um, and our renewal priorities and our renewal plan is based upon trying to um, redress that as quickly and as effectively as we can. Um, Powers is in a slightly complex situation in that um, we do provide some diagnostics, but most of our other cancer services we um, commission from other health authorities, which means that um, it's very complicated tracking and understanding what's happening to all our patients. So one of the first parts of our plan is to recruit and implement a cancer improvement team who will work with the Welsh Cancer Network to give us and get more data to help us really understand what's happening to our patients on the pathways and help us plan the future pathways. There is um, a lot happening in terms of looking at um, more rapid diagnostics for patients whose um, whose diagnosis may not be clear, so vague symptom pathways are developing rapidly and we are working with the cancer network to make sure that the POWIS patients are able to access those services um, as well as everybody else. And lots of other um, diagnostic initiatives are being looked at, which we will be fully plugged into in POWIS. We'll continue to have our provider service such as endoscopy, which we are providing in some of our community hospitals and on the whole, they've cut up very well during the pandemic, so they will continue. Um, and with all the information of the data, we're just we're going to build linking with the network to make sure that POWIS patients continue to have a joined up and efficient service to get their treatment and uh, their diagnosis and treatment as early as possible. Thank you very much, Kate. Uh, that's that's great. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next priority under tackling the big four is, of course, mental health and um, a very high profile area in particular. So thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Carol. And I'm afraid I would have used myself to so thank you, which is it is obviously going to be a high profile area at any time, but particularly as we move out of the COVID pandemic and we work together across health and social care with all agencies to understand the implications and the need for additional support of our communities. Uh, our mental health services were kept open throughout the COVID pandemic, which has been really beneficial. Uh, we've seen improved delivery of performance uh, as reported in other board meetings, but also uh, a delivery of Silver Cloud, a mechanism of cognitive behavioural therapy that allows people to help themselves and support themselves and decide the kind of support that they require. Um, however, we are not surprisingly seeing an increase in demand. This priority is about what options exist for us to, to, to meet that demand and provide as much possible support as required by the right agency, which may not necessarily be healthcare for our populations. 
Uh, the summary includes additional funding given by Welsh Government for a range of particular areas, including crisis care, eating disorders, perinatal mental health and daily intervention psychosis. So our priority is working on that. We also work with our partners. We have a very strong mental health and LD partnership within Powys uh, and a solid foundation to ensure that we review our Together for Mental Health strategy to ensure our mental health work is truly embedded in our health and care strategy across Powys in the coming year. Thanks, Carol. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Um, uh, moving on to the penultimate uh, area, and that's respiratory. And uh, Claire Madsen is our executive lead here. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Carol. So the area around respiratory is something we've continued to work on throughout the pandemic, because um, as we know, COVID-19 does affect the respiratory system quite significantly. So we have continued to recruit to posts in, in this area, including bringing new professions into Powys, um, having our first um, respiratory physiologist uh, join the team. Um, the, the main aim of the respiratory um, way forward and renewal is to standardise our offer across Powys and ensure that everyone is, off, is getting an equitable service and that we really have a good offer for people with long term, the long term conditions around respiratory. Um, we really want to work along preventing admission um, to secondary care, but also supporting people to come home early if, if they have required a, a secondary care admission. And we, we want to really look at um, repatriating services back to Powers and, and offering a more localised service. Again, one of our challenges here is our medical model, um, as we don't have any um, district general hospitals in our area, but we're, we're looking at different models to attract um, doctors to come and work in our area. So, so this is really an exciting way forward to really look at the offer we can put in powers to support people with respiratory conditions, I think. Thank you, thanks very much uh, indeed. And uh, last but not least is circulatory uh, disease and um, Stuart. Yeah, thank you, Carol. Um, so the last big four is um, circulatory disease. Um, in terms of uh, uh, renewal priorities and, and focus for this year, it's particularly on trying to really work out, I think, some of the pathways around some of our main circulatory disease areas, so stroke, um, heart failure, um, diabetes as well, obviously, as part of a circulatory disease program is in is in scope as well. So uh, really the focus for 21-22 for is trying to map and understand those pathways in terms of uh, taking the value lens really of, of quality outcomes, what, what matters for patients, and then um, also uh, elements of, of, of cost detail as well. So we're just beginning to sketch out that programme really, I think, for um, for this year and um, put some detail in terms of timetable for the rest of the year. There's a very practical piece of work, however, happening right now, uh, particularly in one area around community cardiology. So we're having a close practical look right now at some of our opportunities that we might have about developing community cardiology services in Powys. And that's a, a more immediate um, practical action that we're taking under the circulatory disease work alongside the more strategic look at um, some of those uh, more perhaps high value pathways that, that, that we have in place in Powys around some of the other um, circulatory disease areas. Thanks, um, thanks Carol. Thank you, thank you very much and, and thank, thanks to the whole team and I hope that um, anyone sort of looking in at this presentation uh, can see that this is a team approach to really trying to take forward actions that will help the population um, and, and particularly the areas uh, where there's been significant impact uh, as a result of the pandemic. So Chair, uh, I recognise quite a long presentation, but hopefully thorough and comprehensive. I would just uh, end by saying a couple of things. Um, there's a huge ambition here, but we are quite a small health board really, and um, we've got a very big agenda on our plate, both in terms of trying to make sure that we are responding as effectively as possible to the ongoing COVID uh, issues um, uh, and the increasing uh, numbers at this stage with the third wave, but also the vaccination programme, making sure that our core services are delivering and then making these changes to help us all to um, uh, catch up and transform services for the better. So there are some risks that I should flag. Uh, one is about the capacity uh, in the organisation and um, the uh, funding that Welsh Government has given us will help. 
Um, uh, but of course, we know that there are significant workforce challenges, so we're being as creative as we can uh, on that. Um, uh, but also getting the timing um, and the balance right across all of these uh, priorities as well. So there, uh, there are risks. This is not a risk free plan um, and we'll be looking to manage those risks uh, in conjunction with obviously board committees as well as we move through the year. So thank you very much, Chair. I'm very happy to take any questions. Robert has a question. Uh, thank you. The delivery plan is, is very detailed and I was particularly interested in the renewal priorities, uh, but I'd like to ask, ask a question at a, a less granular level really, and it involves the process involved in the planning of extra clinical capacity by the health board on the one hand and the budget on the other. Were there things that might have been added to the plan which would increase capacity but which it was clear would not or could not be funded. I'm aware that the minister has said that they want the boards to stick to budget in the future. Is this likely to restrict the capacity building by this board and by our partner trusts uh, and boards in the foreseeable future? So an easy question Carol. Well, thank you very much, Robert. Um, uh, a really important question, I think, um, because there, were, there has been a lot of commentary about how much uh, money uh, it will take uh, for the country to recover and, and in particular the, the health service. So uh, waiting times are at their worst for uh, a, a significant number of years. And for us here in Powers, we've never had waiting times as uh, challenging as they are now. Um, uh, plus the other areas that we've outlined you know, are really, really significant uh, for the population. So what is really clear is this will take uh, additional resources uh, to come forward. Um, I, I mentioned that we've had 2.5 million. Uh, we did put an application in that um, totaled about 2.9. So uh, we didn't get all that we asked for, but I, you know, I do believe that um, Welsh Government were uh, very supportive of the case that we put in um, and um, uh, even those areas where um, the direct proposal uh, was aligned rather than, um, if you like, the, the core target area. Welsh Government have looked to support that, so been really pleased with the initial support. What we have had to do is to submit uh, plans and have dialogue with Welsh Government uh, about some of the, um, uh, the, the, the key areas that uh, in particular we think not just us but other health boards and the English trusts of course uh, that serve our population may need further investment in. So I think um, Welsh Government are viewing the £100 million that has been allocated so far as a uh, a step, but not the only step in investing in recovery uh, in relation to the NHS at this stage. Um, as we develop further, uh, Robert, there will be things I have no doubt that we would wish to put forward to Welsh Government um, uh, for their consideration. But what I would say is we are constrained sometimes not by money, but by the availability of workforce. Um, by by the the sheer lack of you know uh, doctors nurses and some other professional groups that are available uh, to us. So whilst money could be a constraining factor, actually the the predominant uh, element is uh, is the availability of the workforce, which is why we want to make this work attractive and Powys to be a really good place to come and um, uh, and work in. Um, the other thing I would just say is that we have, and it's easy to almost forget this, but we have balanced our budgets for the last six years now. It is good governance and a good habit <laughs> to get into that. And um, I think because we have been able to do that, Welsh Government do look uh, to us as a stable organisation that they can invest in. So I would be wanting to try to maintain that uh, as we progress through what will be quite a rocky period. So I, I hope that's helpful, Robert. It might not have given you the absolute uh, granularity, but we, we've, we do feel we've been pretty well supported with the 2.5 million 
to date and there's nothing stopping us thinking that if we've got good proposals to put forward in the future that we wouldn't get further support. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'm absolutely delighted with the um, very comprehensive but clear way in which this presentation has been given to us today, which is which is why I think there are not too many people wanting to comment or ask questions. Uh, I can see that Ian Phillips has a question or comment and so has Mel Davis. So over to you first, Ian. Uh, thank you, Chair. So uh, again, can I just uh, add to that and thank you all for what I thought was an excellent presentation. Uh, for me, it clearly highlighted the plans and priorities for the coming year. Um, I welcome the report and the opportunity to comment on the document that I've had previously as well. I think it's a really helpful document to set out clearly and concisely uh, what we need to do based on evidence and best practice, which I think is also important, the amount of work that's gone on this year in actually gathering uh, all of that evidence and and for me although it's a one-year plan which isn't usual I, I think it really there's no doubt that it it builds on our previous plans um in in terms of our uh, health and care strategy as well as focusing on the uh, recovery and renewal agenda so the fact that it's a one-year plan and we we can't because we have some immediate priorities doesn't for me detract from our uh, longer term strategic uh, um, ambitions uh, I think it is also important to say thank you to the team for producing such a um, comprehensive and cohesive plan in uh, challenging circumstances, both in terms of the agenda at the moment and the and, and the time skills. Um, just a couple of points of detail for me. So my apologies for the detail. Um, I'm not usually a detail person, but all, all, although I do tend to pick up on a couple of things. So uh, understand the, the 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 time skills here. So just a couple of things on unscheduled care and out, in, out of hours and just an observation that when we talked about one one, uh, when we talk about mental health, we mentioned one one one, but it isn't mentioned in this section in terms of the unscheduled care and, and out. so that so the couple of things that just jumped out uh, for me and that so that that was the first one. Uh, for the team and the second one was on the digital uh, first uh, plan and there were two things um, for me on this which are implicit in what we do and I just wondered whether we should be uh, a little bit more explicit in committing to the development of the strategic framework in the in the high level plan in, in partnership and consultation and the other thing that uh, the final point for me was on infrastructure and access which we highlighting the plan as being a major issue and I just wondered on reflection should we be committing to a review of our infrastructure in order to provide us with a plan and priority for uh, the development of business cases investment in the future so that we, you know for me it is something that we should be doing both of those things are some things that we either are doing or should be committing to in the in in the coming year no no major rewrite being suggested there just a, maybe an extra sentence to commit ourselves to it explicitly thanks very much ian i'm pretty sure that jamie and then pete will want to comment on uh, both of those uh, elements uh, just to, before i uh, in, invite them in uh, just to comment really on uh, the, the last sort of 18 months have been um, very fast moving and it's there's hardly been a moment to catch a breath um, uh, for, for, for any uh, anyone really, uh, let alone those who are very rapidly implementing digital solutions to support care. Um, and perhaps in line with the statement that Haley made about innovative environments and requiring that sort of pause point, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to need to have a pause point during this year just to think about where we've um, where we've been, uh, how quickly we've progressed, and what that now then means for the future. So, just to give you that sort of an indication, um, still feels at times, as you indicated, that we're we're still in the thick of all of this, um, and that we we will need some further pause points as well. But if I can just bring Jamie in on your specific comments, and then uh, uh, across to Pete. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that, Carol. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, I, I think you, you picked up on the comment in the mental health slide about 111 and the crisis care issue. So that's specifically mentioned because that's an additional level of support we're trying to put in through 111. 
for people in the mental health crisis. Um, and we, so that's why it's referenced. I think once this is a, a, a detailed plan, it's not all we're going to do either. There is day to day work that needs to carry on, of course, and, and unscheduled care is a day to day flow uh, action that we take place on. So, so uh, we run our MAUs, we have patients coming and going into our beds on a daily basis, rightly so. Uh, and that's just, just normal business for us here. And there's no renewal around that. Although, however, the whole piece of work led by Claire and uh, Kate on frailty and long term conditions will help us shape what our model is around non-scheduled care. Um, my one comment is on active hours slash 111. Uh, I've have to take a paper through to our delivery performance group yesterday and that will come to board members who are on the PNR committee on the 2nd of September updating where we are on active hours on 111 in the re just re recently gone year. So we pick up in detail there on that. Is that okay, Carol? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie. Yes, and um, thank you. Across to Pete. Yeah, thanks, Carol. I don't think there's a lot to add, really, because I think Ian summed it up well in his comments. So um, it's implicit within all the things we're doing around infrastructure, developing our longer term strategic framework, but happy to add a couple of words and a sentence in around to, to strengthen and emphasise that. So we'll do that. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for those uh, clarifications. Mel, would you like to come in? Yeah, I'll be pretty brief, I suppose, um, because I think Ian has sort of like summed up a lot of the different points in, in going over the plan and how it sits. But I, I just, mine's very, quite reflective, I suppose. This is probably the last plan I will be um, sitting on going forward. And I'm just sort of thinking about where we've come from as a health board when I look at this plan and the conditions and the circumstances we find ourselves in. And I would just say for the board, um, as an outgoing vice chair by the end of this year. So I went to the end of this plan and I was looking through it and seeing the quarter fours and thinking, I'm not going to be here for the quarter fours. Um, so it was a very weird thing for me to be doing, you know, but I would just say that back in 2013, we didn't have these sort of plans, you know, we didn't have a budget that we could say that had been approved for six years. We didn't have um, a direction. We didn't have a health and care strategy. We didn't know what our estates would be doing, but we knew they were in poor shape. We didn't know. Um, I'm just trying to emphasise, I suppose, the journey we have been on over the last six or so years and to be really proud of the fact that I look at this in the, in, in the backdrop of a pandemic um, and it's robust. We've just heard from all our directors. Um, we It feels like we have a good grip. It feels like the governance is in order. I, it gives me confidence and assurance as a board member that we are positioning ourselves properly to go forward. Um, so. I, you know, I understand that there's a long road to recovery on the back of the pandemic, but just the way the balance between what our aspirations were pre-COVID um, and how they have been interwoven and, and enmeshed into where we are going, um, and then and then the understanding of what we might need to do, I think puts us in a good place. I mean, it's been so fast and considering the pace that we've had to work at, um, so I'm, I am taking the opportunity, because we don't often do it, um, to publicly blow our horn about this particular. It's only an annual. It's annual. We were used to doing three, um, and that enabled us to plan in a totally different way, more flexibly. But this, is, this I think, is a really positive um, step forward. So I, I would say thank you very much. Um, and I know that's a statement, not a question, but um, I needed to take the opportunity because I won't get another one on the way we've worked over the last few years on this particular issue. So um, thank you for the presentation. I think it was um, really cohesive, really um, rounded and balanced, and um, I think it's great. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mel. Blowing our trumpet. <laughs> thank you, Mel, for those very opportune and lovely comments, because it's very clear just, I think, to anybody looking at this plan, that it's the product of a very significant amount of hard work by our executive directors, our current executive directors, building on uh, work that's gone before, and of course their teams uh, together with our partners. So, Geoff, uh, many thanks to everyone involved, and um, I hope that um, you know everybody knows how much we appreciate that work. Um, 
I'd like now to move forward and ask you um, to approve the annual plan for 21-22. And it is sad that you won't be with us at the end of this, Mel, but um, thank you for everything you have done and your contribution to the Health Board. Um, is everybody happy to approve? I can't see any dissent there, so thank you. Thank you, Trish. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, yes, Ian as well and Carol. Thank you, everyone. I, I'm assuming that everyone who is saying that um, they approve. Yeah, thank you, Susan, <laughs> is is willing to come in. If not, uh, and Hayley again, thank you, everybody. And we'll take it that this annual plan is approved. I'm very, very grateful to everyone involved. Um, there are no other items for, for discussion at this meeting. So just to alert you uh, to the question of any other business, I haven't had notification that there is any, so I think we can assume that there is not. Um, and I'd like to close the meeting at this point, but remind you that our next meeting of the board is the 28th of July. 2021 at nine o'clock via Microsoft Teams and an AGM will follow that meeting. So thank you everybody and especially thank you to our presenters today. Thank you.